I had two problems in my home office setup. First, I hate being late for meetings. And second, I needed a new docking station. Both could be solved with the Wobot Mini Dock. And today I want to tell you about the docking station of Wobot and what you can do with it. There are already many videos about the specs of the Wobot, so I will not go into details what the specs of it are, but more for me the advantages and disadvantages. So first of all, Wobot sent me this box for free so I can test it out and can give you an honest review. For me, it was very important to understand the developer experience and how to create own apps because this is in the end, for me at least, what it makes. If you go to Amazon and try to find a good USB-C solution for your desk setup, you end up with something like this. It has USB-C port for your MacBook, charging port, HDMI and two normal USB ports. So this is basically the standard USB hub you can buy and there are tons out of it. Don't buy them too cheap because I already fried a MacBook with one of them. Uh, this one is quite good. I have it for a few years already, used it quite a lot, but honestly it was missing a few features for me. And here the Wobot Mini comes into place. Here you can scroll through with this scroll wheel on the side. Uh, it's a bit like at the Apple Watch. Uh, I quite like it even so in the first run in this one. It's a bit laggy and that's why I usually don't know in which direction I scroll. Anyhow, uh, what I use a lot is the weather one. So you basically just show the weather of Berlin in my case. Um, but mostly what I use is the one that I built and that's the Wobot calendar. And if I open it, it will fetch the calendars. And as you can see, it got red because currently the Wobot mini is ongoing, the event. In 30 minutes, I have the event to cut the video. Let's see if I can manage that. And afterwards, I want to go to the gym. So in one hour 40, it will change the color based on the current version. So if I remove the event from my Google Calendar, uh, let me just do that. It should um, change the color. It goes every minute, so it will not fetch super fast, but now it's in 10 minutes, so it grows green. Currently, I also just show three events, but yeah, there's a lot of customization ongoing that you can do that we will take a look in a second. What you can also do is play games. So you can open the game emulator, you connect to your device. It should scan for the device. And if it's connected, yes, I can play Donkey Kong. As you can see, it is very tiny um, and hardly you can see something in here. So this is the game emulator. It works not the like thing that I would use the most. So for me, I think the weather, my calendar or the Pomodoro timer are things that I like. So for example, the Pomodoro one, I built myself one, you may saw the video. So you can just start. I would love that it gets red or something that you change colors but you can build your own as you like. So you could also just program your own Pomodoro timer. So the last thing that I want to show you is how to program the robot and also my thoughts about cursor that I use to program the backend. So how does my service work? So basically I have a web server, web server, and this one is connected to Superbase because I use Superbase a lot. I love it. Superbase. It's very easy and simple to set up small projects. So this one is connected to here. And my Wobot box is here. Wobot. And this one holds an auth token. Auth token. And to get my calendar events, it goes to the web server with the auth token. The web server goes to Superbase, gets the authentication and refresh token from Google. Auth refresh token, checks if it needs to be refreshed. And if yes, it goes to Google, gets a new refresh token, um, saves this to Superbase, very simple. So it's a pure CRUD. And with this token, it goes to the calendar API, Google calendar, and gets the events for today. 
events for today. And this basically is then piped back to the robot box. The robot box parses the data and shows it. So that's the easy flow basically, v very simple. And I just need to hold the auth token in the robot box. And this one is, yeah, updated then in Superbase because the OAuth flow in the robot box probably possible, uh, but I didn't know how. And also the login screen and stuff, it's very easy. Grant access to the system. It's quite simple to a UI. So let's go to my calendar. So let's go to my calendar website. Here it is. It's also auto-generated, honestly. I just click sign in with Google. It will go through the sign-in flow, show me the token in here, and then I can use the token to get my calendar events. Very, very simple. The cool thing is that I generated the whole thing with cursor. And honestly, I was positively surprised how easy Cursor is if you know what you're doing. My two cents on Cursor are it's an amazing tool if you know what you do, but if you don't know what you do, it's very tricky to debug the code because it made tons of mistakes while coding the whole thing. Uh, but since I know how to code, I could read it and fix the bugs. So there were like quite a lot of bugs. Also, whenever there was something that is a bit more complicated, it got stuck and I had to uh, do it myself. Also, I sometimes say do this and it does something else as well. So it is a bit complicated in some places, but all in all, I am super impressed. I could code the whole backend, the whole server in like one hour, where if I would have done it manually, it would have taken me at least five, six hours, if not more. I can suggest you try it out, play around with cursor and make up your own mind. Uh, just don't just judge by like, it's the hype thing. Yes, it is, but still I think it's valuable to use and valuable to learn uh, if you do like very simple POCs, prototypes. Also on niche languages, it's very bad. But if you use TypeScript or Python or Java, I think you can be quite fast with like implementing stuff, simple apps, simple things, it's good. Whenever it gets complicated, sorry, you still need to do it yourself. This is the server. I will upload the code. It's running in Docker, very simple. Uh, I can unfortunately not make the outflow public because I would have go to the Google verification process to make the whole API public, uh, but you can just generate your own auth tokens in Google Cloud. So you can generate this, uh, host it yourself. It's very simple. It runs on one of my servers, just the Docker file that basically runs the whole thing where you add a few environment variables and that's it. The robot UI, I also created with cursor, but here I have to say it like messed up a lot. I had to do a lot myself. Uh, as you can see, there are still a lot of print statements where I don't know what happened and I had to debug a lot because it could not generate me good quality code um, to yeah, have like a very simple UI. I had to do it myself, but all in all, it's also not too much code. And what I do is just go to my RP URL that's hosted on my own API or my own Docker endpoint that is basically running on a server behind an Nginx. And it sends also the token. This one is currently hard coded. You can also create a little UI to um, yeah, put it into yourself. But I did not, I just hard coded it for now because for me, it's only my robot box. So why should I? And then it basically checks if there's an event and changes the color of the peripherals. That's also very easy. So you just say peripherals, ambilight, and then you um, set the color. I had to do a lot in the Tony UI in the end to make up for the mess that Cursor did. There were quite a few things that Cursor made wrong and could not fix. So I had to do it in this Tony UI. And then you basically just uh, connect to your ESP put in here the app and there you just upload the whole robot app. And that's basically it. So it's very, very simple. You just upload the Python code. Uh, you just get all the debug messages in here when this is connected. And it's also very well documented on the robot side. So you can just go through, try it out. Very, very simple. If you have any questions, um, happy to answer them. And yeah, I, I would love to see what you come up with, what you can create with the robot box. Uh, for me, it's a very nice element to have on my desk. 
It looks very nice. It shows me the time. Uh, it shows me the upcoming events. I don't need to miss any events anymore uh, because it just shows me also visually with like the color coding that there's an event starting in the next five minutes. So I need to prepare. As you may know, I try to optimize my home office setup as much as possible, but also I want to have it as minimal as possible. So for example, this keyboard, it must be as minimal as possible, as easy as possible to use. And uh, quite a few things that I had, for example, the Pomodoro timer that I built myself with an ESP, I don't use it anymore. And that's just because it is inconvenient to have it as well. Let me know down in the comments what you would build or would you like to build with the Wobot Mini, which apps you are missing and which apps you think could be a nice addition. Thank you for watching. I wish you a great weekend, happy coding and see you soon. And I can't wait to see all your comments about what you would build with the Wobot Box. Happy coding. See you next time.